silver stacking and stacking within your means. As silver stackers, we struggle with deciding how much of our wealth to convert into precious metals. This is, of course, a very personal decision and no one can tell you what the right answer is for you. Silver stacking is most definitely a long game. If you're stacking silver with the idea that you're going to get rich, or even think that silver stacking is going to make you a millionaire someday, then I would strongly urge you to reevaluate your personal financial strategy. I'm not saying that it can't happen, just that unless you've amassed an enormous amount of precious metals and there is a complete failure of the global financial system that makes precious metals the sole source of wealth, it's probably not going to provide the end results that you're anticipating. What silver stacking will do is retain the wealth you already have and prevent it from being withered away by inflation and the corrupt fractional reserve banking and debt-based slave society that the central banks have created to absorb all the wealth in the world. I do believe that we will be witnessing in our lifetime the greatest transfer of wealth in human history. In this respect, I believe that those of us who are accumulating precious metals will be participating on the positive side of this great wealth transfer, as those who don't make any preparations will remain within the confines of dependence from the government and financial institutions for their basic needs, continuing the debt relationship cycle. I stack precious metals as part of the process to be able to break the bonds of debt servitude. And since the bond is the debt, the key is eliminating the debt and the leverage that the system has upon us by refusing to participate in the debt slavery system. No one forces you to use credit and to go into debt. It's a choice that has to be made, but so many choose it because it's been made so easy to do. We have been conditioned to believe that it's our right. It's part of the American dream the land of opportunity, and there's some truth to these statements. But if you choose to use credit that you can't pay back, you now have been caught in the web and are just waiting for the predator to come roll you up in its silk and you'll just be stashed away as a nice meal for later. Almost everyone uses some kind of credit at some point. The key is to not get caught up in the debt web. Today's society has been systematically conditioned to buy now and pay later. Every part of our culture supports this. Credit is ridiculously easy to acquire because when credit is used, it becomes debt. And with debt comes an interest income to the creditor. Another term for interest is usury. Usury, as defined today, is the practice of making unethical or immoral monetary loans that unfairly enrich the lender. Originally, usury meant interest of any kind. In early modern times, this was considered very immoral and even illegal. Think of a usury as someone taking advantage of others' misfortunes. Something like a loan shark today. Historically, religious prohibitions on usury were predicated on the belief that charging interest on a loan is a sin. Islam and many parts of the world even today regard charging an interest of any kind for a loan as sinful. Jews are forbidden from usury and dealing with fellow Jews. However, there are permissions to charge interest on loans to non-Jews. In order to break the cycle of debt, it is necessary to completely change the traditional way of thinking about money and finance. Understand that paying off debt can take years or even decades. Once a debt-free status is achieved, then and only then can you claim financial independence. It's not easy, especially in today's society, when every influence around us is convincing and even enticing us to feed our materialistic needs to maintain a standard of living that we have come to expect that we are told that we're entitled to, that we need and that we deserve. It's a mind game that keeps us in debt, keeps us working far past our retirement years, forces us to spend a huge percentage of our hard-earned income to pay interest for the privilege to use the bank's credit and be part of this debt-based slave society. It doesn't have to be this way. 
We can take control of our own finances. We just have to be willing not to play the game of trying to keep up with the Joneses. If we choose to live within our means, we can take back our financial independence. In a booming economy, living beyond your means is less dangerous because jobs are ever-present, pay is good, prices are low, products are plenty, and governments are stable. And this describes the economic prosperity that the United States has been enjoying since post-World War II. The media, the Fed, and the government have done everything they can to convince the masses that we are still firmly within these same booming economic conditions. Don't let yourself be deceived. This is not the case today. These are only apparitions of a past reality. We are a nation of debt. According to recent data compiled by the Federal Reserve Bank of New York, Total credit card balances amounted to $848 billion in the first quarter of 2019. In 2018, American banks paid $113 billion in just credit card interest, up 12% from the $101 billion in interest paid in 2017, and up 49% over the last five years. Americans are on track to pay over $122 billion in interest in 2019. That's an increase of $9 billion in just one year. The total amount of American citizen debt owed to credit cards as of January 2019 was $1.03 trillion. 176 million Americans are actively using credit cards. Each consumer has an average number of three credit cards. The average credit card balance per consumer is $6,348. And the average interest rate on credit cards is now 16.86%. This is the privilege we pay to use credit. But credit cards aren't the only source of debt. Current outstanding auto loan balances as of March of 2019 were $1.16 trillion. The average balance per car loan is $10,100. There are currently 113.1 million auto loans. The average new car loan was $32,187 in the first quarter of 2019, $554 for new vehicles, $391 for used vehicles, and $457 for a new vehicle lease. Student loan debt is a huge problem in our society today. The current student loan outstanding balance is $1.56 trillion. The average student loan balance per borrower is $36,500. There are currently 42.7 million student loans. Of those who are currently making payments, the average monthly payment is between $200 and $300 a month. The total current outstanding mortgage balance is $10.3 trillion. The average balance per homeowner is $213,700. The number of homeowners with a mortgage is $48.2 million. The median monthly mortgage payment for a U.S. homeowner is $1,030 a month, according to the latest American Housing Survey from the U.S. Census Bureau. The current personal loan outstanding balance is $130.3 billion. The average balance per loan is $7,200, and there are 18 million people out there with personal loans. According to a Pew Research study, more than half of Americans actually spend more than they earn each month and are using credit to bridge the gap. Take a hard look at yourself and determine if your cost of living exceeds your income. With the exception of your home, you should strive to be debt-free and living within the means of whatever income you currently have. Try to keep in perspective the purpose of a home. A home is a safe shelter from the elements. Fundamentally, that's all it really is. Anything beyond that, ask yourself, is this a need or a want? 
The value of your home should be proportionate to the percentage of your annual income over the life of your mortgage. You don't have to live in a mansion. You need a safe shelter from the elements. Your mode of personal transportation should be able to safely take you where you have to go. You shouldn't finance your transportation if you're in debt. There are so many options that don't include a debt payment that will afford you the opportunity to be able to transport yourself to where you need to go. They might not be the most convenient or stylish, but remember we're talking about your financial independence. Perhaps public transportation, a motorcycle, bicycle, or even a used vehicle that you can save up for and it can be paid for without credit. As your wealth increases and you are no longer in debt, you can always begin saving for an upgraded form of personal transportation. When you've saved the amount needed, then and only then make the purchase, but don't go back into debt for something you absolutely don't have to. Do everything you can to completely eliminate the use of revolving credit type credit cards. If you allow a balance to carry forward past your due date, you have just incurred a usury or interest payment for the privilege of using the bank's credit. It's such an easy trap to fall into, but you have to avoid it because it only begins the slippery slope into the deep dark debt abyss. One of your first objectives to free your bonds of debt is to pay off all your credit card debt as soon as possible and get all those balances to zero. If you use a credit card, make sure you have the means to pay it off in full at its due date. This is the only way to avoid usury, but I would caution you that having a credit card can be like an evil temptation taunting you to use it beyond your means, so bear that in mind if you choose to continue to use revolving credit cards. I would suggest assessing your current standard of living and ask yourself if what is causing your debt is something that you need or is it something that you want, and then make the necessary changes to readjust your expenditures to match your income. This might mean choosing to sell your newer car that you have payments on and buying an older one with the cash proceeds and owning it outright. This may mean not buying a new television or household appliance that you really don't need. This may mean buying food that is healthy but more affordable and not doing so much dining out. Basically lowering your standard of living to match your income. If more income is needed to provide necessities for you and your family, then you can choose to work more hours get a second job, or even look for a better paying job. Whatever it takes, but avoid at all costs buying anything using credit. Emergencies of health and life are always exceptions and that should go without saying. So where does precious metals come into the live within your means idea? Given a choice to pay off debt or buy precious metals, for me, paying off my debt came first. As your debt becomes more controllable, then the consideration of budgeting in the precious metals to retain your wealth can begin. It's important to always be mindful not to put yourself in a position where you ever have to liquidate your precious metals in the short term to pay for emergencies. It would most probably be at a significant financial loss as whatever premiums were paid would not have matured enough to be covered by the market's price in such a short term. Before you even consider buying precious metals, you should already have some kind of emergency cash fund available to react to any emergencies. Once the crisis occurs, there won't be the ability to produce income for a while. And whatever debts you have will continue to accrue interest, putting you further and further in debt and possibly resulting in your possessions becoming repossessed due to a lack of payment. This is why I don't want to be in any kind of substantial debt when the financial crisis occurs. If you choose to live within your means, believe it or not, you may find yourself happier than when you had the nicer, newer things because you weren't constantly stressed about figuring out how you were going to pay for them, constantly fighting with your spouse over money issues, having to deal with collection agencies, 
never having enough cash for daily essentials. Ask yourself, do you really have to have the latest iPhone or the latest model car? How much do you spend on cigarettes and alcohol every week? How often do you eat out? Think about any expenses that you could live without. Achieving financial independence is not an easy path. You have to choose to make this self-sacrifice, but once you are debt-free and you only make future purchases within your means, you will see your quality of life improve once again. But the difference this time being that as your quality of life improves, you will still remain financially independent and debt-free. Think how much easier the decision would be to purchase precious metals knowing that your financial responsibilities are covered and every ounce of silver you accumulate only adds to your peace of mind that you are achieving personal wealth retention. Do you feel that you are capable of making that sacrifice to be able to live within your means and become debt free? Let me know in the comments section below. A big thank you to all who support this channel, especially those who take the time to like and share and comment. I don't monetize my channel so your likes, shares and comments really help the channel to grow and allow this channel to be seen by others. If you're not yet a subscriber, hit the subscribe button. Then be sure to select the notification bell to be notified as soon as I post up new content. And as always, feel free to share this content with all. Thank you.